Every day, you and I come in contact with products that come packaged in paperboard folding cartons. Foods, beverages, medicines, housewares, auto parts, and many other consumer goods that make our lives more convenient come packaged in folding cartons. The folding carton is vital for containing, identifying, protecting, and marketing a vast array of these consumer goods. Many industries rely on folding carton manufacturers for the packages necessary to distribute and sell their products to consumers. The folding carton manufacturing process involves the design of the carton and the conversion of raw paperboard, inks, coatings, and adhesives into the finished package. Following the design of the package's graphics and structure, the manufacturing process begins either with the conversion of paperboard roll stock into sheets or in some facilities with printing the paperboard. Printing is done on both roll-fed as well as sheet-fed printers. The industry utilizes lithographic, flexographic, and rotogravure printing. The printed paperboard is then run through die cutters which cut, crease, and perforate the paperboard. The excess material or trim is then removed in the stripping process, which can be done automatically on some machines or manually with air hammers. Now beginning to take shape, the flat folding carton is taken to the finishing department where the carton is folded and glued and packaged flat for shipping. The folding cartons are then ready to be shipped to the customer who will set up, fill, and seal the carton. The Paperboard Packaging Council is the full service National Trade Association representing the interests of the paperboard folding carton industry. One of the primary interests of the industry is safety. The industry is committed to operate in as safe and efficient a manner as possible and to protect its most valuable resource, the people directly involved in the production of folding cartons. We produced this video in the hope that it would instill in you the fundamental principle that safety must come first at all times, that you, the employee, have a responsibility to follow safe work procedures and to always think about what you do before you do it. As you watch this video, please keep in mind that its purpose is to provide an orientation to the generic folding carton manufacturing process and to some of the safety concerns associated with that process. This video is intended to serve as a very basic instruction to some of these concerns and procedures for new employees who may be encountering our indices, processes, and functions for the first time and as a refresher and review of basic safety principles for current employees. Each employer in our industry will have site-specific health and safety rules in place with which employer and employee alike must comply. We hope and expect that this safety video will prove to be a valuable complement to the complete site and job-specific health and safety rules and training in effect at your particular work site. If you have specific questions or concerns regarding specific safety or OSHA compliance issues, you should consult your plant's safety manager. The machines in folding carton plants are only as safe as the people who operate them. So listen to the advice of employees who've worked years in plants like this. Be careful. Just take your time on whatever you're doing. No rush. Think about what you're doing before you do it. Take your time. Don't be in any big hurry. You just have to practice safety every day. Wear all your safety equipment. Stay away from moving parts. You can't rush. The main thing is you can't rush. I rushed one time, I got myself in trouble over it. Abide by the rules and regulations. Some incidents occur because the machine's safety guards aren't used, or because safety rules are ignored or forgotten. That's what any company makes rules for. This is the way they want me to do it. They're paying me to do it their way, not my way. So if you're in a hurry, you'll make a mistake or take, try to take a shortcut. And then something bad happens. Yeah, yeah it usually does. You just got to work smart, that's all. What's that mean? Well, don't take shortcuts, stuff that you know you're not supposed to do. That's how people get hurt? Yeah, basically. How do you stay safe? Uh, well, we practice a lot of lockout, tag out. Altogether, these workers have more than 230 years experience in folding carton plants. Their message? Safety is a way of life on the plant floor. So, follow the rules. Be careful. Take your time. Don't rush. Don't be in a hurry. Don't take shortcuts and think about what you're doing before you do it. Of course, watch out for pinch or nip points. Anywhere two rollers go together, you know, it's going to pull you in. So every one of those is a nip point. Now let's get specific about how to safeguard yourself as well as co-workers. There are two parts to this video. Briefly, here's what we're going to talk about. Part one general safety advice covers personal protective equipment. 
goggles, earplugs, gloves, know what to wear and how to wear it. Traffic safety in the plant. Understand the hazards posed by moving vehicles and the loads they carry. Lockout tagout procedures. Learn and practice them like your life depends on it, because it does. Chemical hazard information. Understand the proper handling and disposal of chemicals you work with. Machine safety guidelines. Are the guards in place and secure? Never operate any machine that is missing its guards. Housekeeping and cleanup. Some of the hazards of poor housekeeping are obvious. Some are not. Proper lifting technique. Know how much weight you're lifting and how to do it right. The second part of the video offers safety tips involving the specific kinds of jobs you do and the types of machinery you work on. We'll cover five areas. Material handling equipment. As you'll see, the issues involve much more than safe driving techniques. In the sheeter area, hazards are as large as the machine itself and as small as knowing just the right way to cut those bands. We'll show you how. In the printing area, you'll want to avoid nip points, of course, but did you know there's a right and wrong way to hold a cleaning rag? Knowing the difference can avoid injury. Safe operation of a cutter involves knowing much more than where the nip points are. Veteran operators explain how to stay injury free. In the finishing area, there's a different set of risks. We'll identify the do's and don'ts of working on folder gluer machines like these. As you can see, there's a lot to learn. We'll start at the beginning of your shift. Before you walk out on the plant floor, make sure you have all the right equipment. Personal protective equipment. Always wear the appropriate safety equipment based on your company's policies. Safety glasses with fixed side shields like these protect your eyes from chemicals, compressed air, and flying debris that could come from any direction. Earplugs or other devices protect you from noise that can cause significant hearing loss. Work shoes with steel toes protect you from falling objects and minor collisions with hard objects. Long hair should always be contained with a net or cap when around moving machinery. Some facilities always require nets or other types of headgear for safety or sanitary purposes. Wear gloves when appropriate to protect against chemicals or very sharp objects. Gloves also protect hands from paper cuts and infections that may follow. Loose clothing can get caught in machines. This is a safety hazard. So keep shirts or blouses tucked in and wear short sleeves, not long sleeves. Of course, no ties allowed, a rule for managers or visitors walking through the plant. Sometimes you see people walking around the plant with a rag in their back pocket hanging out loose. Not a good idea. A loose rag can get pulled into the machine, and if it gets pulled in, it can pull you in. Remove all jewelry. You can get hurt if a ring, watch, necklace, or bracelet catches on the paper or the machine itself. As for earrings, they shouldn't dangle like this. An earring like this is a lot safer. Traffic safety. Don't assume roll-grab truck drivers and forklift operators can see you walking through the plant. If you can't see the driver, then he can't see you. This driver has limited visibility when going forward, even without a load. So walk in designated areas and be on the lookout for flashing lights like this and ringing bells or horns when they're in reverse. Know the lockout-tagout procedure. When a machine is locked out like this, it can't move. What's the single biggest mistake somebody could make working on a machine like this? Uh, not locking it out. Now when should somebody lock out tag out? When they're going to reach in the machine at any nip points or anything like that there. Sometimes if you don't lock the machine out it'll jump or it'll move and then you're going to get hurt that way. And your hands are in there and then look out? Most of the time your arms, hands, sometimes your head's in there and, and you just got to lock it out. Whatever machine you work on, know the lockout tag out procedure and always follow it. If anything ever happens we hit stock first and then if they're going to be in there working then we definitely need to lock it, lock it out and tag it out. Chemical hazard information. There are a variety of chemicals in the plant. You should know about any potentially hazardous materials you may encounter. Your employer has a material safety data sheet on each hazardous material. The MSDS contains information that's critical to the safety of not just yourself but the people who work around you. The MSDS identifies the chemical, how it affects you, what the hazards are, first aid information, firefighting measures, accidental release measures, proper handling, storage, and disposal methods, and the correct personal protective equipment you should wear. 
This and other information in the MSDS is designed to make for a safer work environment. Know where this information is located. Refer to it when handling hazardous materials. And remember to read and heed all warning labels on hazardous material containers. Machine safety guidelines. Only trained and authorized personnel are permitted to operate equipment. The main switch must be off when machinery is idle. Before starting machinery, make sure everyone is clear of pinch or nip points and moving parts. And make sure there are no loose tools or parts left on the equipment. Loose parts or tools can become missiles that injure workers and damage equipment. Over the years, safety guards have been added to various folding carton equipment. The guards are designed to protect you. Don't operate the machine unless the guards are in place and secure. A lot of the machines now have guards on them, and you have to respect the guards. Leave them on where they're at. I mean, leave them where they're at. You take them off, you're going to ask for trouble. The main thing is keep your guards down when you're running so there's no, uh, no chance of getting into the machine itself. Always start machinery on inch or slow. Never reach into moving machinery. The red button stops the machine. I mean, you want to stop the machine before you do anything. Don't try to do anything while the machine's running. If a machine part is defective or missing, don't use the machine. If you see something unsafe, what do you do? I tell my boss, my foreman, uh, get it fixed. Housekeeping and cleanup. Jeff Weir practices good housekeeping by putting scrap in designated areas. That's important throughout the plant. The cleaner and neater your work area, the safer it will be. You try and keep everything cleaned up, but the cleaner it is, the less chance there is of an accident. Keep floors, runways, and steps clean and clear at all times. Basically keep it clean, keep uh, all the debris and everything out of the way, so you won't trip and fall on it. Wipe up water, oil, grease, glue, or any liquid that someone can slip on. Main thing, keep things picked up off the floor. Get oil or water on the floor, you gotta get it cleaned up. Especially up around the moving parts. You don't wanna have to slip up there and reach for something when you have moving parts. Stripper Dan Whitehead warns that paper can be slippery too, so he makes sure to clean up scrap on the floor. On this type of carton, it's slippery. And if you don't clean it up and stay, keep it clean, then you're going to slip and fall and then you can hurt yourself that way too. Keep the aisles clear of skids or pallets. Store them flat and square to each other. Don't leave them in the aisles or projecting into an aisle where someone can trip over it. Even parked electric walkers or pallet jacks can be a tripping hazard. Proper lifting technique. Proper lifting is essential to guard against sprains and strains. Make sure you do your proper stooping and bending and uh, Observe what you do. Even with big muscles, Dan Whitehead cautions that you can get hurt if you don't use the proper lifting technique. Even for somebody as strong as you, what's the right way to lift this stuff? Uh, the right way to lift it is to bend your knees and to keep your back straight, regardless of how strong you are. So bend those knees and keep your back straight. What's the correct way to do this kind of lifting? Always carry your load close to you, keep your back straight, bend with your knees and lift with your legs. Let the strength come from your legs. Follow these simple rules. Be certain your footing is good. Bend your knees. Keep your back straight. Have a secure grip on what you're lifting. Keep the load close to your body and lift with your leg muscles. When lifting heavy or awkward loads, get help. In part one of the video, we covered issues involving everyone who works in the plant. Part two covers hazards involving specific jobs and machinery. Material handling. If you operate a roll grab truck or forklift, watch out for pedestrians. They don't realize that you can't see them. What's the number one safety issue with these trucks? Uh, looking out for pedestrians and walkways and stuff like that. Watch Alvy Gardner after he drops this load. He backs up. Looking left, then right, then left again, and right again. It's the same procedure when he backs out of a truck. He checks the rear view mirror, looks to the left, then to the right, and then to the left again. Of course, you also have to watch out for other vehicles, like the one Charlie McDonald was in. Well, I was riding the foreman's cart, and I came around the corner, and a forklift came around the same corner, so to avoid it, I tried to go in here, and I didn't make it. I run into the wall, and I run this wrist into the wall. Broke your wrist. Mm -hmm. Obey all warning and stop signs. Take it easy coming around corners. Yes. 
Make sure you're the only one there. Don't overload equipment. Check its rated capacity. Pick up a load squarely so it won't shift while you're moving. Keep the load as low as possible when moving to prevent tipping it. Travel in reverse when the load blocks your forward view. There is one exception to that rule. Travel forward when going up a ramp. Hitchhikers are not permitted on material handling equipment and check the clearance on trucks, trailers and railroad cars before entering with equipment. Also make sure the delivery truck's wheels are chocked or that dock locks are being used. Usually the driver takes care of that, but you got to more or less look and see if he did do it. Before entering, Alvey suggests you make a quick inspection, check for rotten flooring. And if your dock is equipped with dock locks like this, as well as stop lights, make sure the green light is flashing before entering the vehicle. Green light's got to be on and your dock plate's got to be up naturally, ready to go. If you see the red light is flashing, do not enter. So there's a lot to think about when operating this equipment. One more thing, it's not as easy as it looks. If somebody's not trained to operate this equipment, they better not get on it. <laughs> they better be trained. The electric walker or pallet jack is another common piece of material handling equipment. Check for tripping hazards before moving a load. As Charlie Noggle demonstrates, the proper way to use the walker is to pull the load, except when depositing the load in a storage area. The sheeter area. Safety in the sheeter area begins with opening the next roll of paper. Watch our Charlie Noggle cuts the metal band. He places one hand above the cut point. That prevents the top part of the band from popping up into his face and causing serious injury. Watch again. Here's an instant replay of the right way to cut that band. When cutting the paper, use the proper tool and cut away from your body, not towards it. Watch again. Here's an instant replay of the right way to cut the paper. Moving these rolls can be hard on your back, so as Charlie demonstrates, use a device like this to push the roll into position. Careful not to get your feet under the roll. After threading the roll, you'll prepare for the splice by trimming the excess paper. As you can see, you're in a somewhat awkward position. Before reaching for that knife, make sure you have good footing. Once you're up and running, there's more to worry about. The sheeter, like a lot of other machinery in the plant, has quite a few nip points, so don't put your hands in it while it's running. That may seem obvious, but people have lost fingers, hands, even arms, putting their hands in machinery like this. Another challenge facing the sheeter is preparation. Usually when you're on a make ready, those are your biggest problems. When you change jobs, there's things you have to uh, change. Okay. Different gears in. Uh, I sort of like to try to plan my moves ahead of time. So when you're going from one job to the next, make sure you're planning everything and double check everything. Right. That's that's basically it. The printing area. There are three types of presses in widespread use throughout the industry. First, here's a look at the flexographic printing press. It's also known as the flexo. Second, there's the rotogravure press, in use at some folding carton facilities across the country. And finally, there's the sheet-fed offset printing press, which remains the most widely used press, especially in smaller companies. Though the three types of printing presses operate differently, they have a common set of safety hazards. So, for the purposes of this training video, we'll feature the offset press. First, some advice from an old pressman. You gotta fear the machine a little bit. It's a lot more powerful than you are. Before starting the press, make sure everyone on the crew is clear of the machine. How do you work as a team so that nobody gets hurt? Well, you always have to know where the other person is, especially on these big presses. A lot of times it's important for all of us to work together on the press and everybody to be watching everybody while they're working in case anything unsafe would occur. And you have to communicate one way or another, either with the buzzers or just go hunt for the person, but you don't want to have you don't want to inch press and run the press, you know everybody's out of the way. Special care must be taken when cleaning the plates in the press. First of all, as you can see, it's a tight fit. Make sure you're in a balanced position. If you're not balanced, you could slip and inadvertently grab a moving part. Also, make sure to properly hold the cleaning rag. Is this the way I wrap it uh, to clean the plate? No. What you want to do, you want to wrap your rag in quarters. In a, into a quarter like this. Normally we'll use two rags or three rags which makes it a little bit thicker. It'll have a little better control because it'll ball up this way and that could be a hazard if it balls up on you. Now why don't I want to wrap it around like I said, had it there? 
Well, if it's wrapped around your hand and uh, the cylinder grabs a hold of the rag and it's wrapped around your hand, it's going to drag your hand right in the press. We don't want that happening. No, we don't. If the rag gets caught in the rollers, let it go. It won't damage the press. Putting ink in the fountains is another awkward position, so make sure you have good footing and know where you are in relation to the rollers. A slip-up could drag a hand or arm into the machine. And as Tammy Iyer demonstrates, once you're in position, be careful where you put that ink knife. Make sure that you keep your ink knife ahead of the roller so that you don't get your ink knife back into the moving rollers on the other parts of the press. Yeah, that's very important. Never operate the press unless all the guards are in place and secure. Uh, always keep your guards down and uh, your fingers out of any place where there's a nip point because if that press takes your fingers, it's going to take your arm too. If we see anyone that's in an unsafe position, we automatically hit the stop button and shut the press completely off. When adjusting the plates, turn off the press and turn on the safety switches. Lock out, tag out the press if you're going to do heavy maintenance such as removing the rollers. When pulling samples from the press, don't get near the grabber or gripper bar as Dave Brown demonstrates. You gotta stay away from the gripper bar. Uh, and if you don't? If you don't, you lose fingers. Hands. You, you've got all 10 fingers, I see. Right, you're right. Well, how did that happen? I guess uh, working carefully. Good advice. Work carefully and think about what you're going to do. That's what you do, just use your head mostly and you can avoid accidents. The cutter. Ned Collier is a veteran cutter. He says working on a cutter requires not just skill, but concentration. Just watch every move you make. You got to. And don't rush. You got to take a dime out, you're not going to hurt. Watch yourself. There are different vintages and models of the Bob's cutter. One hazard is common to all of them. What's the single biggest mistake somebody could make working on a machine like this? Uh, not locking it out. Like other machinery in the plant, locking it out is critical to safety. Sometimes if you don't lock the machine out, it'll jump or it'll move and then you're going to get hurt that way. And your hands are in there and then look out. And most of the time your arms, hands, sometimes your head's in there and, and you just got to lock it out. Even when the cutter is locked out, stay out of the stripping chase area unless the chase is raised all the way up and the safety pin or rod is engaged. The support cables wear and can break, causing the chase to fall and shear off fingers, hands, even an arm. And when the cutter is running, stay clear of moving parts. You want to stay away from it as much as possible when it's moved. Once the cutter has done its job, there's still stripping to do. It's a physically demanding job involving the use of an air hammer. When operating the air hammer, position your feet so that they won't be struck by the chisel on the follow-through. And regularly check the air hoses and connections to ensure they're in good condition. The finishing area. One of David Boxler's jobs is operating a folding gluer machine in the finishing area. Safety issue, uh, really just paying attention to what you're doing, basically. This machine is a blur of moving product and moving parts, chains, pulleys, belts, all places you can lose a finger or more if you're not careful. With a straight line gluer like this, don't operate it until you know the guards are in position and secure. And don't reach across it and don't climb or crawl on top of it. What's the single biggest mistake you can make on this machine? Adjusting something while the machine is running would be the biggest mistake. If you have to make an adjustment that involves reaching in or around moving parts, first shut off the machine. While machines do the same work hour after hour, day after day, your body can't. The repetitive motion simply wears down body parts. Now here in the finishing area of this plant, workers rotate from one job to the next every few hours to avoid the strains that come from repetitive motion. On one job, they pack small cartons. On another job, larger cartons. Sometimes they're feeding one type of machine. Other times they're feeding another machine and sometimes they're working with hand tools requiring fine motor movement. The key to avoiding strains is to rotate jobs during the day and use proper body mechanics when lifting, bending, or leaning. A safe working environment doesn't happen by accident. It requires planning, awareness, and a commitment to safety-minded work habits. Let's review the key safety tips we've covered. Don't rush. Don't be in a hurry. Don't take shortcuts. Think about what you're doing before you do it. Follow all operating rules and safety procedures. 
Learn and practice lockout tagout procedures. Watch out for pinch or nip points. Make sure your guards are in place and secure before operating machinery. Don't put your hands into moving equipment. Make sure coworkers are clear of the machine before you start it up. If you're not trained on the equipment, don't use it. Wear the proper personal protective equipment. Don't wear loose fitting clothing. Remove jewelry and don't walk around with rags hanging from your pockets. Watch out for moving vehicles when walking through the plant. If you operate material handling equipment, look in all directions for pedestrians and obstacles. Understand the proper handling and disposal of the chemicals you work with. A clean work environment makes for a safer workplace. When lifting, get a good footing, bend your knees, keep your back straight, get a secure grip, keep the load close to you, and lift with your legs. When cutting metal banding, remember to hold the top section so it doesn't fly up and hit you. When cutting, always cut away from your body. Avoid tripping hazards by properly storing skids and pallets and parking forklifts and other material handling equipment. Rotate jobs to avoid the strains of repetitive motion on your body. Safety is not something you begin practicing when you walk into the plant. Remember, the use of alcohol, illegal drugs, or the abuse of prescription drugs do not mix with safety, so don't come to work impaired. Know the effects and side effects of any over-the-counter drugs or prescription medication you may be taking. Some are a safety hazard. Personal stress and anxiety can affect your concentration and judgment, so try to check those problems at the plant gate. And of course, no horseplay is allowed in the plant. It creates dangerous situations. This video is brought to you with your best interest in mind. When you practice safety, you protect yourself, your family, and your future income producing ability. Think about it. Thanks for watching. This video has been brought to you by the Paperboard Packaging Council and its member companies. Our special thanks to the Fort James Corporation and its employees at the Chambersburg, Pennsylvania facility for their cooperation and for sharing their experience and safety advice.